This video is about creating an element stiffness matrix. Imagine we're a software company, Acme FEA. By the way, I have made that name up. The first task is to design the rod element. Well, it's not very ambitious, but we all have to start somewhere. So here is the rod element. As you can see, it's very similar to the rod we've been looking at in the previous videos. One of the first things we have to do with a new element is to define a sign convention. It might seem a bit pedantic, but unless we can get that right, we can have difficulty later on. So displacements are positive to the right. Internal nodal forces are also positive to the right. And finally, internal nodal stresses, again, are positive to the right. Let's check to see if the displacement coordinate system makes sense. Remember from the last video, the definition for the relative displacement. Let's put some numbers in and see how it works out. U1 is displaced to the left, 3 units. U2 is displaced to the right, 4 units. If we stick to our sign convention, then the change in length, or relative displacement, works out to be 7 units. That all seems quite logical, as long as we stick to that sign convention. Now we look at the force balance within the rod. There is an internal axial force T which is in balance all along the rod. If we take a slice in the middle of the rod we can see the balancing forces T on both cut faces. Each end of the rod is connected to a node. These nodes have internal nodal forces, F1 and F2. It's important to understand the sign convention and the free body diagrams. So it might be worthwhile pausing or rewinding to take a good look at this diagram. We looked at the internal force T in previous videos. We saw that the rod is in balance when it acts like an equivalent spring stiffness being stretched by the relative displacement. As a quick reminder, the rod stiffness is EA over L. Now we can do a force balance at each node. For the left-hand node, F1 plus T must balance to zero. For the right-hand node, F2 minus T must balance. If we substitute for T, then we can get a force balance at each end where the relative displacement is developing a pull in the spring against the nodal force. This pair of force balance equations is remarkably difficult to get right and again it's probably worth pausing or rewinding the video just to check the sense of the equations. So now we can collect the pair of forces into a single vector called the force vector. We can also collect the displacement pair into one vector called the displacement vector. We saw in the last video there is a big motivation to write these equations in matrix form. We could solve these two simultaneous equations by just using elimination without going to matrix notation. However, in the last video we were talking about 10,000 degrees of freedom, in other words 10,000 simultaneous equations, and we really don't want to solve those as loose simultaneous equations. So now we collect the equations up and we can write a matrix expression. The matrix in the middle is the stiffness matrix. So now we've completed our first task, we've spec'd out a stiffness matrix formulation for our rod element. The Acme FEA product is on its way. Now here at Acme we've decided to adopt a particular sign convention. There is no standard sign convention and you may find that textbooks or other software user guides adopt different conventions. Whatever is chosen, the fundamental rules of equilibrium still apply. Now, here is our regular spot quiz. The first question is, how many degrees of freedom in the rod element? If you forgot, rewind and you'll be able to check it out. Next question, which direction is positive for the Acme rod? Finally, a question you will have to research. Why is the element stiffness matrix symmetric? Try googling using these terms. 
In the next video, we use three of our Acme rod elements to assemble a simple structure and solve for deflections and stresses. So we'll see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.